But just as a manager, as a senior uh, executive of your company, you might want to have some of the basic of what a good threat and risk assessment is supposed to be about. Well, to keep it very, very, very simple, and I'm glad to have a blackboard here, uh, we've got basically thread to and thread from. That's sort of the simplest way that I can describe a threat and risk assessment. What is a threat to? Threat to is basically what I need to protect into my organization. What needs to be protected? That can be my intellectual property. That can be uh, some of my trade secret, some of uh, my people, my assets. In the field of security, probably 90% of the security companies are capable to perform a decent exercise of here. If they have a little bit of brain activity, if they had a little bit of, of, of experience in the field of security, and a little bit of common sense, they will be capable to tell you about 90% of what you need to protect. And that will be good. That will be very good. The problem is they stop there. They don't go there. They don't do the threat from. I might need, I might need to protect something. I might need something very, very, very important to me but maybe nobody give a damn. So, if you have somebody who's in charge of security that is responsible to protect and will spend with what I call the shotgun approach because tout le monde le fait, fait le donc. So they do it because everybody does it. Well, they will be spending your money the wrong way. Now, the challenge that we're facing in the field of security and as corporate officers is that unfortunately security is always perceived as an expense, not a strategic investment. That's where we fall. Because we perceive it as an expense, because a company usually, let's say a company that produce, produce toys, they want to produce toys. They don't want necessarily to produce uh, uh, security. <clears throat> but we do security because, you know, we legally need to protect our, our people. We don't ha want to have a liability issue on our head. Um, and of course, there is maybe some criminal activities from the outside that wants to come in and stuff like that. Well, the problem is, is that this is, this is all good, but this is perceived as a security, as an expense. It's when you go to the threat from and try to find out who wants to hurt you that now suddenly you discover exactly where you should sort of point your security and spend your budget. That brings you to be much, much more efficient in maximizing the use of your security budget. And when you overlap those two, that you come to a good vulnerability. <laughs> assessment. This vulnerability assessment gives you a pinpoint exactly where you are. Another way to look at it is if you have sort of these results match with these results. And when you overlap them, the point of contact tells you exactly where to spend your money. I'll give you an example. I performed a threat and risk assessment uh, for Idle Quebec several years ago. You might recall there was uh, 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 some people came out and uh, uh, a journalist or CBC journalist came out and talked about this capability of walking on dams, and it was easy access and it was dangerous because you know. Uh, the province of Quebec is co-owner of uh, Hydro-Quebec, so it was very, very expensive if we were to lose a dam and stuff like that. So they called me because they said, you know, we need a threat and risk assessment to perform against terrorism and stuff like that. But suddenly, I told them, said, well, terrorism are not interested in blowing dams. We don't have factually demonstrating any demonstration that they will actually target your dams. And anyway, to build or to destroy a dam, you need probably a, a mini nuclear bomb. But when you perform a threat and risk assessment, <coughs> excuse me, when we perform a threat and risk assessment, we've realized that the previous years there was five sabotage incident. Three of them has been done by the by some employees, and it cost them a total of one hundred and ninety million dollars for those three sabotage incidents. Now, while everybody get excited uh, about terrorism, there was no issue. But when you look at something else, 
you look suddenly that the problem was more insight and more a sabotage issue. The refocusing and the readjustment here gave them a chance to be much more efficient on the way they applied their security and their security budget. Now, coming back again to this element, this element of vulnerability is really, really, really important in terms of being capable to assess exactly who wants to go against your corporation. Now, I was talking about corporate espionage and terrorist uh, and uh, uh, industrial espionage. So let me give you some numbers just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. As it was mentioned in my introduction, in the mid-90s, I was the chief of Asia Pacific. So basically, from Afghanistan all the way to North Korea, that was my field ground. That was my, where my operations were taking place, and people were reporting to me for that purpose. Uh, because it was Southeast Asia, or Asia, so <clears throat> Asia Pacific, we were covering terrorism as much as espionage. And I was really astonished at that period of time, 1995, to see the amount of spy cases that were coming from Asia. So I asked one of my analysts to try to assess how much money, and try to come with the numbers, how much money do we lose per year due to corporate espionage. Now back in 95, five years after the collapse of Soviet Union, at the beginning of this shift that I was talking about, where we move from a military confrontation to an economic confrontation, we were capable to demonstrate that we were losing an average of 10 to 12 billion, it's a B, billion dollar per year. 10 to 12 billion dollar. A comparative study in the US at the same period of time estimated that the US were losing an average of 24 to 25 billion, twice as much, but they are 10 times bigger than us. So per ratio, we were actually losing five times more. Now, unfortunately, since then, we have not performed any study of that nature. I retired, I'm gone. <laughs> so they didn't perform any st study of my knowledge uh, 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 like this. But the US have performed some. And the US demonstrated and found out recently, and the director of, of um, the FBI in the conference revealed recently that since 1995, the U.S. have now moved to losing an average of $250 billion per year, 10 times more in 15 years. The reason? Again, this confrontation. Now, if we're extremely conservative and we say that we don't, we don't necessarily have this progression of 10 times, but we just double our numbers, we're still losing about $25 billion a year in Canada. And when was the last time you heard about it? When was the last time you discussed about it? And that's the one of the great problems that we are currently facing. Is the government of Canada, regardless of the color, and we're in election period now, regardless of the color, have always practiced the policy of speak no evil, see no evil. So if you don't talk about it, and you don't warn the companies and you don't warn the general public, people don't become aware of it. 